TikTok is probably one of the most interesting platforms for artists. And what I mean by interesting is, unlike other platforms such as Instagram and Twitter and the rest of them, the art community on TikTok is quite different, especially when it comes to just how people behave and react to art. If you share art that can be qualified as good art because it looks appealing, which basically means it's drawn well, the anatomy looks more or less correct, and the image has a unified color palette that adheres to any one of the commonly used color schemes that also further happens to prove how awesome the artist, which in this case may be you, is at understanding color theory and how to just use colors in their work to tell a story, you get a good response from the community for the most part. And people either commend you for your unwavering effort to create beautiful masterpieces out of nothing, or they leave remarks saying they want to be like you because they enjoy your work for the most part and look up to you as a solid role model in the art community. If you post bad art or let's just say unconventional looking art, or you happen to be a beginner casually sharing your art journey, well, the response you're going to get is going to be quite different. From people mocking you about how your art looks or the way you draw certain features to people making fun of how long it took you to learn to draw and still your drawing looks like absolute dog poop, which basically means your dreams of becoming the next Sam Does Arts or Cooling are going nowhere in the art community. So let's just say the TikTok artist experience is quite interesting because unlike Instagram where you get encouraged no matter what your art looks like or where you are in your art journey, on TikTok however, it seems you immediately get judged and perceived based off of the quality of art you make. While some people might argue this can be a good thing for any artist and can serve as a canon event which spirals their art career into becoming a popular artist in the art community, I'd like to counter that argument with a few of my observations from how I've seen this negatively impact artists on TikTok. So if you're new to this channel and love listening to art commentary style videos and videos discussing topics that happen in the art community, please subscribe to the channel and join the Discord server using the link in the description. Artists are very self-reflective people, which is why just like any other artist, we like to compare our art to what we were making in the past, which is a good way to observe our progress and can serve as an indication for growth and improvement. But aside from that, artists also like to compare their work with other artists, which is also a good way to monitor your growth and how fast you're improving, don't get me wrong. But after experiencing this personally and seeing a lot of other artists just talking about this on TikTok, comparing your work with other artists could kinda get unhealthy along the way. If you're heavy into art and look at a lot of art on TikTok and are active in the art community, there's a big chance that your For You page is going to be filled with numerous videos of artists just going crazy making all types of art and that's not a bad thing because that's just how the algorithm works. It feeds us more of what it thinks we're interested in, regardless of how we feel. It doesn't care if we're having a bad day or feeling down or unmotivated, it's still going to feed you what what it thinks you're going to enjoy, no matter what. And this becomes a problem for artists because every time you come on TikTok, you're automatically fed with tons of amazing art and you're constantly seeing artists who might be better than you the more you keep scrolling down. It's just constant art with the next one being better than the last and subconsciously, you're obviously going to start comparing your work with all the art you're seeing because, well, you're human and I guess it's just in our nature to compare ourselves with our peers and people we look up to and aspire to be. And also, because we're constantly trying to find inspiration or learn a new technique we could carry into our own work as artists. Comparison in itself isn't a bad thing, but constantly comparing your work to other artists is a very unhealthy thing for you, especially in the long run. Because aside from it just draining you mentally and causing unwanted stress and anxiety, you unknowingly start setting unrealistic expectations for you and your art just based off of all the other amazing artists you're seeing on your For You page, who are on a totally different different path than you and are facing different challenges in their own art just like you. I've seen artists compare their work with other artists on TikTok and get mad at themselves and their work because a younger artist seems to be drawing better than them when they were at that age, which I believe could be referred to as ageism, I guess. And I think a lot of artists are victims to this, especially since TikTok has a user base which is mostly filled with younger audiences. So it's safe to automatically assume that the average number of artists are probably going to be on the younger side. So the tendencies of finding an artist who is just 13 years of age but pretty decent at art 
is going to be probably very high considering the fact that the world has developed a lot and now there's so much information about art so learning new techniques and simplified practices is way easier than it was some years back so ideally it will take less time for a younger artist who is dedicated to practicing every day and improving to get better much faster than someone who was learning art in the 90s and 2000s like literally there are so many art tutorials and tips and tricks videos now than when i started started art a couple of years back. I remember then the only places you could get decent art tutorials were Massive Black and Schoolism I think. And then if you wanted to share your art and get feedback from other artists or people in the art community, you had to post on the concept art forums and you could actually get good feedback and the art community was really supportive and encouraging, especially to new and beginner artists. But now, it's a whole different story. If you're one of those artists who compares their work with other artists and then gets worked up when they find out the artist they're comparing their work to is younger than them, cheer up and be happy for them. They may be having an easier time learning how to draw faster than you are, but that doesn't stop you from improving just because you're older than them with a couple of years. Everyone learns at their own pace, so just keep practicing and use them as motivation. If they can do it at a young age, you can do it as well, no matter what your age is, so just keep going. The next form of comparison that makes artists hate their work or feel discouraged is when they begin to compare how much engagement they get on their posts with the amount of engagement other artists receive on their posts. And I know this kinda sounds funny, but it's pretty serious. These social media platforms have made us so addicted to chasing likes, views, and comments, and then we indirectly base how good we think our art is with the number of likes, views, and just reaction it gets on social media. And I feel like this goes just beyond TikTok and transcends into other social media platforms as well. Placing value on your work based on engagement is a quick way to send yourself into a downward spiral that ends up with you either depressed and extremely unhappy with your art or demoralized and struggling to get out of an art block. Now I know this might be a tough pill to swallow especially for young artists who are trying to build a career out of social media with their art because it's basically second nature for them to compare their account with other artists who are making similar content to what they intend to create so they try to match the amount of engagement they're getting on their account as well. The problem lies in when you're constantly comparing yourself to other people forgetting the fact that what made them successful in the first place was because they probably focused on what worked for them and just being themselves and kept on doing that for a long period of time consistently or short period of time for some artists because luck also plays a role in all of this I guess but I think one of the main factors contributing to artists love and hate relationship with their art on TikTok is the pressure to conform to the platform's norms and trends and this fear of being left behind or overlooked can lead artists into compromising their unique artistic vision just for the sake of virality since TikTok trends are constantly evolving and artists may often feel compelled to jump on these trends to stay relevant which can then result in an artist shifting their focus to create work that matches with the trends rather than pursuing their own original ideas which then results in burnout after some time. I think as artists it's imperative we understand that the value of our work goes beyond how many likes or views it gets or if other people like it or not. If you make a drawing for yourself that you're really proud of and then you post it on social media, there's a high probability that not everyone who sees that drawing is going to like it or respond to it the same way you did because you made it. Some people are just not going to like it and that's fine. As long as you're content with what you made and you're seeing progress in your art, that's a win-win in my book. It doesn't matter if the drawing has 20 likes or 20,000 likes. I mean 20,000 likes might look good and make you feel better with all that dopamine running in your head but that's just where it ends on the other hand if you make a shitty drawing that gets 20,000 views it's still a shitty drawing despite being popular just saying so building yourself up as an artist to a point where you can separate your art and find value in your work excluding social media interactions is so beneficial i can't speak enough of it slowly learning about yourself 
what you like about your art or don't like and focusing on improving your work in the process will make you a much better artist and if you then intend to choose a career on social media you already have conquered being vulnerable to what others think about your art so if the right people come to you for your art that's great and if they don't and your art doesn't receive the same amount of engagement as other artists that's all right too just keep being yourself and the right people will eventually find you or you could also just draw cute girls and the right people will come to you faster on instagram just saying the next thing i've noticed on tiktok that artists compare often which makes them hate their art is art styles i think this one is pretty common for artists who draw in a certain art style but then they come across another artist who has a very unique or interesting art style which looks super clean or painterly or just different from how they're used to drawing and then they become immediately attracted to that art style and at this point i think i'm talking about myself I think this happens to probably almost every artist. Looking at your work every day just becomes boring to me at times. So you feel the need to refresh and take in some new inspiration by looking at other people's work. Another reason I think this happens to artists is because as you progress with your art, your expectations for how you want to see your art and what makes a good drawing or a good piece of art changes. And it keeps on getting higher because you're exposing yourself to more and more beautiful art, which then causes you to begin to feel like your art is not good enough or makes you stop seeing the same amount of growth and improvement in your art. A little exercise I do from time to time just so I don't feel like giving up completely every time I start feeling like I hate my art is just look at artists I enjoy and then practice drawing certain things I like particularly in their work which could be faces, eyes, the way they draw lips, the way they draw hands, literally just anything I enjoy in their work. And then after doing these studies I then go back to my own work and try to use what I learned from their work to inspire my own drawings. The key thing here is to let their art inspire you and not to directly copy it one for one. That just sets you up for another disappointment in the long run because you're eventually going to get tired of looking at that art style and then you'll start looking for another artist that you're going to steal from. I feel artists also develop this hatred for their art style because as artists, it's a thing we do where we always look at our work and go, oh, this is not good enough or this isn't as good as this person's work. And I don't know about you guys, but every time I feel this way, it always ends up with me not wanting to draw ever again or just me stopping drawing entirely for a long time and then coming back later on when I've eventually found motivation. I can't really explain what causes this feeling or what ignites it and sends you into this downward spiral, but comparison probably plays a big role in that. These days, I found a way to make it better by just accepting accepting the fact that some days I will not be inspired to draw and some days when I draw I may not be able to make the prettiest drawings. But as long as I try to draw something and pour how I feel into the canvas, it just automatically soothes me. Especially when I go back and look at my older drawings and see how far I've come and the progress I made in the years. A lot of other artists responded to this video that spoke about this and they pretty much felt the same way as I did and they spoke of how they finally found motivation to draw. After seeing another artist talk about it and share their own experiences. Now with all these issues we talked about being key elements resulting in artists hating their art or just their entire experience on TikTok, I think most of them can be avoided if we can find the right balance between making art we enjoy while still remaining authentic to our true selves and still growing a career on TikTok as an artist or content creator. While we're chasing views and engagements, I think it's important to set realistic expectations to what we want to achieve with our art or our career. Just so you don't get burned out or annoyed when you don't grow as fast as you thought you would or your work doesn't receive the amount of engagement you think it should. Take breaks often and take the time to focus on your mental health and practice other forms of self-care and if possible, invest in other hobbies outside art. Go for walks or go to the gym. Try out other activities that will take you away from your computer and possibly even touch grass. This way you get to refresh your brain and clear your head by not thinking about drawing or making any art. So so when you eventually come back to drawing, you'll be all fresh and ready to make something interesting. Another important tip is to find a group of artists who are similar to you and are dedicated to improving and learning from each other. So this way you can fall back on them to give you
give you advice on your work and at least have other people to talk to when you have your downtimes and need a little bit of support to cheer you up. You can find other artists on TikTok, Instagram and create groups with them and slowly become friends. Or you could also just join my Discord server which has a bunch of other artists who are also dedicated to improving and also just look out for each other as well. And it's also a very nice atmosphere, everyone is chilling there and the mods are great just saying the link is down in the description all jokes aside having a good support system of friends or just other artists that are just like you is really important because negative feedback and criticism whether wanted or not can deeply affect an artist's perception of their work and getting criticized constantly every time you post an image can slowly make artists especially beginners lose their confidence and start to hate their art because they feel like they're not good enough and as for comparison I think finding a good balance between comparing our work with our peers or artists that are better than us is pretty easy to do but a little difficult to develop the habit of. You have to learn to love your work and your progress no matter how little of it you're making. And you have to understand that other artists didn't just become insanely good overnight. Everything takes time and learning art probably takes the most time of all. So celebrate every little hint of growth you see in your work and appreciate every single step you take in that direction and every little drawing you make. You can still compare your work with others but don't spend too much time looking at their work or just looking for what to hate in your own work as this will just result in you hating your art entirely. Use other artists as motivation rather than competition. It doesn't matter if they're younger than you or twice your age, respect everybody and appreciate their work because someone out there is looking up to you and your art just as much as you are too. Anyways that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video please leave it a like. If it resonated with you in some way please share it to someone else so that they might learn from this video as well. And if you're new to this channel and love listening to art commentary style videos, please subscribe to the channel. And with all that being said, I'll see all you pretty penguins in the next video. Bye.